Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you could join us today. In this episode, Pastor Jeremy is teaching on how to win the fight of faith. We believe this message is going to strengthen, encourage you, and can change your life forever. Let's head in there right now. I want to urge you, encourage you, take your identity in Christ. You see, in Christ, I do always win. That means any area where I've lost, somehow I kicked Christ out of that area or I kept him out of that area. See, it doesn't go over real big, but I'm, I'm showing you something. Part of my job is to equip you for the work of the ministry. Part of my job is to encourage you and feed you the word of God. So you have green grass and still water. But another part of my job is to show you where you're wrong, not so you're condemned, but so you change. So if you lose, you know, well, I wasn't in Christ because in Christ, I always win. Yeah, in Christ, I can do all things through Christ. See, who strengthens me? In him, I can do all things. By his stripes, I am healed. Not going to be, I am. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm healed. healed. If you're watching right now because of sickness, you ought to say it out loud. I'm I'm healed. In him, I have all sufficiency in all things. And notice, if you're not careful, you could get stirred up even if you came in here with your spiritual wood wet. Why? All sufficiency in all things that you abound in every good work, that's God's will. And in him, that's what we have. You need to remind yourself of these things. In him, I've got the same power that caused Jesus to come up out of the grave dwelling in my body. Well, guess what? Many times your body will scream at you. No, no, that's not true because you feel bad. Something's wrong. And a lot of times those symptoms are simply ploys from the enemy to get your rudder, your tongue, hooked up and set you on the wrong course. I want to show you something. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. Say it with me. Thank God for the word. 1 Timothy 6.12, I have it on the screen. This is Accelerate Church, an end-time remnant church, but I move quick at Accelerate. So jot these notes down, and you know what? You can always go back and listen on, on, to our services online. Praise God on our website, off of our app, and that'll be a great thing for you to do. 1 Timothy 6.12, look at this. Fight the good fight of faith. Paul telling Timothy this. If this was inspired by the Holy Spirit, which it was, for Timothy... This was after the cross. He's blood-bought, Holy Ghost filled, just like you and me. That means if it applied to Timothy, it most definitely applies to you and I. We've got to fight. Look at your neighbor and say, fight. Welcome to the fight club. See, most people don't know when they say, Jesus, come into my heart and walk an aisle, they just entered the fight club. They don't know that. They're not told that. They think everything's all roses now. They forget about the thorns. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Isn't that good? Both of those show you, if you don't fight the fight of faith, you may not grab a hold of eternal life. But you're called to it. It says to which you're called. And notice this this part. Please pay attention. And have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I want you to notice this morning that your confession is connected to winning. Winning. Yeah. People that speak contrary to what the Word says about them lose most of the time. Every once in a while you hear some wild tale about someone who doesn't know any better, and they're speaking total doubt, total unbelief, and somehow, someway, miraculously, God in His mercy shows up and shows out in their life. But those things happen not because of what those people said, but in spite of them. And there's a huge difference. You don't want to live your life and and say, well, I turned out okay. I know, but in spite of all the plans of the enemy, in spite of all the stupidity that you yielded to, you're here. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about this. We've got to start speaking the right things. People that speak contrary to the word, if you will track them, track it in your own life first, please. Most people always want to track others. Track it in your own life. When you speak contrary to the word, such as, my job about killed me. It's killing my back to go work over there. 
My boss is really ticking me off. He's going to make me act a fool up in here. <laughs> See, if you're not careful, you can't find one scripture for that nonsense. And then every time Monday comes around, you'd get depressed again. I can't go to work. I can't believe it. It's because your confession is lined up the wrong way. You're speaking the way you feel. You're speaking the circumstance, and no one wins speaking the circumstance. Imagine David and Goliath. You ever heard of that story? They still use it in sports analogies all the time. Imagine David stepping out to the battlefield and seeing the champion, Goliath, sitting there saying, send me a man to fight, and all he talks about is, look how big that boy is. His eyes are so big. See, the good thing you don't think about, he was so big, he had a big old forehead. Took that rock right in. Instead, David didn't talk about how big the giant was. See, he won that day. He said, wait a minute. This guy's not in covenant with God. Who is he to defy God? We are in covenant with God Almighty. And folks, if the old covenant was strong enough for a young shepherd boy, 17 years old, to fling a rock, and to sink that into the head of the giant, then borrow his sword and chop that dude's head off and hold it up because he wasn't in covenant with God. Just imagine the new covenant where Jesus shed his blood, the Son of God, and he sets you up filled with the Holy Ghost. And some cancer cell tries to show up. Hey, get ready to take his head off. Depression tries to show up. You better get ready. You better get ready. Now, by the way, David had been practicing the presence of God when no one was looking. He didn't just get in there and pop off. What gave him his boldness is that he'd been spending time with the Lord. What have you been doing on your downtime? See, it matters what you do. It matters what you do. You feed your flesh every down moment you get. No wonder you're not winning the fight of faith. You can't win the fight of faith feeding the flesh. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. See, there's the Holy Spirit, and then there's all kinds of evil spirits. Which one are you yielding to? Which one are you fellowshipping with? It matters if you want to win. Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, Hebrews 3.1. Hey, if you're listening about radio, you better get your Bible out and make sure what I'm preaching is there. Yeah, Hebrews 3.1. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Say, that's me. That's me. Consider. I mean, think about this for a minute, would you? You have an apostle and high priest, Christ Jesus. Did you see what I left out? What did I leave out? Our confession. Do you know most Christians leave that out of their thinking? When they think of Jesus sitting at the right hand of God in the throne room today, when they think of Jesus being our great high priest, they don't think they have any role to play because the preachers are telling them that. But when you read the Bible, it says, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession. So his high priestly duties, his go between us and God, is based on what we say. Therefore, many people never have the victory because of what they say. Notate this if you're taking notes. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. And if you're taking notes, you could say of my. You could personalize it. Let me tell you, when you start personalizing the word and you realize this is talking about me, it makes it come alive at a different level. Yeah, he's the high priest of your personal confession. What you say? What do you say? He's the confession of what you say. So the question needs to just kind of sit on you this morning. What do you say? Well, it's hot in here. I can't even hardly concentrate. 
Well, you're not going to win the victory. You see what I'm talking about? Well, you don't know how people are treating me, how they're talking about me. Everybody's against me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're not against you. I'm not against you. And better news than that, Jesus is not against you. He's for you. Therefore, that confession that everyone's against you is a lie. See, most people are, for whatever reason, they're blind to the fact of why they keep losing. They keep losing because of what they say. Well, I'll tell you what. This dry weather in the panhandle, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. Or somebody said, boy, we had a good time. We about laughed ourselves to death. We were tickled to death. Hmm. See, but the, the enemy's looking for any area where he can take advantage of what you're saying. The news flash is this. He has no authority except what you give him. And a lot of you, since you don't recognize the thoughts that he brings, I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about people that will hear this. Okay, I'm talking about you. If you don't recognize those thoughts and take those thoughts captive, then what happens? Eventually you end up speaking the thoughts he throws at you. Well, I'm not worth anything. Well, I'm ugly. Well, I just did. It's like sometimes you just need someone to look at you with all the love that they can muster and say, shut up. You're, you're, you're like giving the enemy an opportunity here. He didn't even know his thoughts were being effective till you started taking his thoughts and speaking them. I told you that uh, the other day. I'm not going to go into all the details of it, but I know because that was my battle. I, I'm ugly. Nobody likes me. Until that day, that girl said, man, I think you're good looking. I was like, that's all I needed to hear. But see, it shouldn't have taken somebody else I should have been able to see, wait a minute. God was with me in my mother's womb. God charted out my days. God's the one that gave me these looks. I might as well get to liking them. See, I, I, I may not look good to you, but that's okay. I look good to her, and I look good to him. That's all I need. That's all I need. What else do I need? You see how people are? They want, I want a bunch of other people. Yeah, I'm going to talk more about that in just a minute. Go to Hebrews 4, 14. Look at this. We're talking about how important our confession is if we're going to win the victory. This is a big key to winning the victory. Look at Hebrews 4, 14. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who's passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Some people put a period there in their Bible. There's no period there. He did the hard part. He died on the cross. He rose again. Now he put on his priestly garment. He's in heaven. He's our great high priest. You really had nothing to do with that part. But you got something to do with this last part. Let us hold fast our confession. What does it mean to hold fast? You tell me. What does it mean to hold fast? It means you grab a hold and you don't let go. Of what? Of what? Your confession. Holding fast to your confession literally determines whether you win or lose many times. Folks, I've watched it. If you wait to get a good confession until you're in the thick of a battle, physically, let's say. Let's say some kind of disease. The doctor may not even know what it is or they might know, but they diagnose you with it. If you wait until then to try to get your confession right, that's too late many times. That's why when everything seems calm and right now here you are on a Sunday morning able to gather here freely. So now is when you get your confession sh straight and right. And once you do that, then you hold fast to the good confession. You don't let it go. You hold fast to it. And this is the thing. I've seen people in a physical battle. And at first, they say all the right things. But give them two weeks. And I'm telling you, two weeks is a long time to go through a physical battle. When you get weakened, it's hard then to keep that confession of I'm healed. See, it's easy when you feel good to say I'm healed. But what about when you don't feel good? You hold fast to the confession that you're healed. 
Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. Confession is you saying what God said. Where did God say you're sick? Where did he say that? You're sick. He didn't say that, did he? What did he say? You were healed. (laughs) You were, but I ain't feeling it. It doesn't matter how you feel. You were. Say were. So I took my wife to Oklahoma City, and um, we went over there for a little one-day excursion. It was fun to get away. It was refreshing to our marriage, praise the Lord. We had a good time. We went over there, but I'm not there now. So I would tell you this. Uh, Thursday, this is bad English, but hang with me. Thursday, I were in Oklahoma City. I was. Were, was, right? You get this English language. You understand it? I was there. We were there. But we're not there now. I'm talking about something that already happened. So when Jesus said, by his stripes, you were healed, he already paid for it. I said, he already paid for it. So all that has to happen is you have to access what he paid for. Listen, Garrett's a banker. He's helped me with stuff before. Lots of times I I told him to share with you what he did today because we need that kind of help. But, But listen, I had to go to him before and I said, explain to me how this whole credit thing works. Because I had a company that I had gotten all these credit cards, and I had been paying. And, and when I had been paying, I didn't realize it because the same company owned two different cards I had. And I paid the wrong people. And it only happened once after all these months of, of paying, 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 paying. Somehow I got my wires crossed, and I paid double on one, and the other one missed a payment. Well, I didn't know it. So they're marking me 30 days late. Well, then I think I have this impeccable credit score. And I go see Garrett at the bank. Uh, actually, I went to see him after I found out I was not approved for something because I showed that I was late. And it actually, I'd let it go longer than I thought it was paid off. That's the details of that I didn't, didn't include in the story here. But here's the long story short. I went to Garrett and said, could you explain to me how the credit thing works? And he was able to explain it to me because I did not know. I didn't know how it worked. And so when you don't know, you need someone to explain it to you, right? A lot of people have heard maybe what I've said already, that by the stripes of Jesus you were healed, but that doesn't mean they know how to access it and get it where it's working in their life. So let me help you with this. You're never going to walk in healing speaking sickness. It's not going to happen. You can say whatever you want to say about it, but when you speak sickness, when you speak defeat, when you speak weakness, that's where you've set your course of life. You're going to keep living in defeat, in sickness, and weakness. But if you hook your tongue up with the Word of God and say what He says and hold fast to that, now Jesus gets involved. And he goes to God the Father and he says, they are saying this about this situation. Now, I don't know about you, but that's what I want. I want my high priest doing some work for me in the throne room. How about you? Well, then we better watch what we say. Yeah, if we just say anything that pops in our head, Jesus is inactive. If he's the high priest of our confession, that's what we say from the word. If we say the same thing God said, guess what? We access what God provided. But if we say the way we see it, we stay blocked. The enemy obviously is counting on you to change your confession. Because Hebrews 4.14 says, hold fast your confession. So the enemy's entire plan that, by the way, was revealed back in the Garden of Eden. What am I talking about? He said, did God say? There's his game plan. To try to manipulate a circumstance, to come and speak to you, whether through a snake or through a person, or maybe just through a thought, 
Did God say? Why? Why? Because if you don't know what God said, you don't know what you should say. So the enemy, I'm exposing his plan, is counting on you changing your confession. In other words, you stop saying what God said. You got under some other influence and you started speaking something else. You will not win this fight of faith. You will not walk in what Jesus purchased for you. Why? If you don't know what God said, then you don't know what to say. That's a key. Especially in light of Hebrews 10, 23 that also says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Hmm. For he who promised is faithful. I've got good news today. God is faithful on his end. He's never going to change. Has anyone seen the faithfulness of God? I want you to wave at me if you've seen the faithfulness of God in your life. Have you seen that? He is faithful on his end, and we should sing about that. We should shout about that. We should rejoice because we can count on his end. But what about our end? See, he did all the heavy lifting. He did all the hard work. You and I simply have got to line up our speech with what he said. Wow. Hold fast your confession without wavering. Here's what I wrote down. Have it in my notebook. Those that waver will lose. Those that waver will lose. Why would you say something different than what the word says? I'll tell you why. Pressure. Pressure gets on your life, comes in many different forms and fashions. I won't talk about all those. But when pressure comes, that's when what's really in you is revealed. See, some people have said, well, preacher, you're the preacher. I'm sure if you hit your thumb with a hammer, you're not tempted to curse. And you're right when I don't allow that in my ears. Now, if I've let it in in abundance... What I hear in abundance gets down to my heart, and it's from my heart my mouth leaks or speaks. Some people, they're around it all week long. Some of you can't help it because of your job. I understand that. But you can renew your mind. You can get in the Word. And I'll just tell you what I do. If I feel like a little too much of the world's getting sprinkled on me, I'll just go and immerse myself in the Word of God all night long. Last night I turned it on. It's a five-hour playlist I've made. I said, you know what? Bam, I'm going to hear the word all night. Now, I went out like a lot. I sleep so good when that's happening. But your spirit man never sleeps. So my spirit's getting fed the word. Some people say, I don't believe that. You have to be awake. Well, for you to be conscious and awake means when you pray in the Holy Spirit, then nothing's happening also. But I'm here to tell you, your spirit man is alive and well. And I'm never shocked, I've already seen it today, several of the scriptures that are on that playlist, which are hundreds of scriptures, by the way, for it to play five hours. Hundreds of scriptures, they just come right out of me here. Like, I'm not even, you don't understand, I pray in the Holy Ghost to get up here and preach. I just kind of go out of my natural mind and I say, I hook into my spirit, I've learned to do that, and let him go ahead and feed you some word right here. But if I don't have any word in me, I don't have anything to give you. You got that? Well, it's the same way. If you don't have any of God's words in you, then you don't have anything to hold fast to. You've got to hold fast to that hope. Listen to this part, without wavering. So why would you say something different than the word? Pressure. Pain. Yeah. What about this? Hurt feelings. This is a big one. Folks, I've been in the church my whole life. I've, I've had my feelings hurt a bunch. And I've seen tons of others get their feelings hurt. And here's what I've noticed. The enemy is counting on this. If he can get you to have a hurt feeling and to act on it and then speak on it, he's got you right where he wants you. If thou can be offended, thou shalt be offended. That's a foul proverb. If you can be offended, you will be offended. And when you're offended, the purpose of the offense, really, the enemy doesn't even care. Listen to what I'm saying. Necessarily about, I got beef with them, they got beef with me. It's not even about any of that. It's about you changing your confession. So that now he has a place in your life. Why would you say something different than the word? 
when the Bible says, let us hold fast. This is the second verse I've read to you this morning about holding fast. You got to keep that confession. Well, pressure causes people to change. Pain causes people to change. I talked a little bit about that. Hurt feelings. Or what about this? You see it different than what the word says. I just see it different than that. Uh Uh-oh. And then there's something Miss Erin already brought up. She didn't know it was in my notes, but others' opinions. That's a big one. Others' opinions. And just like I even told you when I went down to worship and I told you I got elbow level faith going up here instead. I wasn't like this. I was like this. And my friend pointed like, imagine if I'd done like that. Lifted up what looks like a big old shovel up in the air. You know, imagine what he would have done. If he pointed and laughed at this. You see what I'm saying? Now, why am I bringing that up? Because if I rely on his opinion, I'm going to hold back my praise. But the Bible says, lift up holy hands to the Lord. That's what the Bible says. So my confession is, I'm going to lift him up. When I say I will praise him, I will lift him up no matter how I feel. Yeah, I lift up my hands. I don't wait to see everything the way I want it before I do this. Anybody can lift their hands then. But you got to lift your hands when all you got to go by is the word. Come on, somebody. Instead of leaning on the unreliable sources of pressure and pain and hurt feelings and seeing it different in others' opinion, set your course according to the word. I will tell you this, it is not wise to speak based on pressure. It's not wise, and it's not wisdom coming out of your mouth when you speak out of pain. It's not. And notice, many times when hurt feelings come, pain, pressure, when these things arise, others' opinions are known to you, especially with social media just flaunting them left and right for you. It's easy for you to say, well, let me tell you what I think. The devil's like, yeah, because now you're changing your confession. It don't really matter what you think. What matters is what the Word says. Well, unfortunately, we do have to stop right there. We are out of time today. However, if you would like to hear more from this series on how to win the fight of faith, you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find this message in its entirety, plus so many more that you can listen to throughout your week. But if you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Or you can write us, email us, we would love to hear from you. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.